Hey guys, this is Vishal from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on GCP pricing. Now GCP stands for Google Cloud Platform and we would be understanding it from the pricing perspective. But before we do that, let's quickly take a look at today's agenda first. Now these are the parameters or the points which I'm going to discuss in this session. That is how does one choose a service or what are the different pricing fundamentals? After that, I would also talk about various pricing models that GCP has to offer to you. It's pricing innovations and pricing features as well. Finally, I would finish things off with the GCP calculator and GCP free tier. I hope this agenda is clear to all of you. So let's not waste any time and get started then. Now choosing a service. Well, every customer considers following points as in whether the service is customer friendly, it's transparent and pocket friendly. GCP also takes care of all these points. It is highly customer friendly and it is also very transparent. Now, how is that? Well, when you talk about transparency, GCP offers something called as a free tier. Now it solves various problems which customers normally face. So what are those problems? Well, customers normally have to pay a lot of money upfront and then they get access to the services. So they're not sure whether they should invest so much money or not. What GCP does is it gives you a free tier or a free trial which lasts one long year and you can use all those services for free. Plus all the services provided by GCP do not charge any upfront costs. That means you do not pay in advance. So yes, when you talk about transparency, GCP is highly transparent. Apart from that, it is highly pocket friendly as well. Now when I talk about these points, once we move further with the session, you'd understand these points in detail because I would be covering all the points that are related to pricing and irrespectively or out of turn, we would be discussing these points as well. So bear with me meanwhile and let's move to the next point of discussion that is various fundamentals or the pricing fundamentals. Now, when you talk about pricing fundamentals, every service provider considers these points. What are its compute capacities, services, and how affordable are those? What kind of storage it provides, whether it meets the needs of the users, and again, is it affordable? When you talk about data transfers, the points we consider are whether the data transfer is fast, it is reliable, it is secure, and again, is it affordable or not? Now, when you talk about GCP, it takes care of all these points, and based on these points, it has built various models that let you choose and plan your cloud services very nicely. So let's move further and take a look at those models one by one. Firstly, we have something called as no upfront costs. I think I've already discussed this point a little, so let's move further and discuss this little more. What GCP does is it provides you with a free tier, and apart from that, it charges or asks you for no upfront costs whatsoever. That is, you'd be paying only for those services which you're using and that too after you have used it. The billing properties which GCP uses are very nice. So when you talk about upfront costs, they are absolutely nothing here. Pay as you go model. Yes, GCP takes this in a literal sense. What GCP does is it charges you per second or for the services which you've used on second basis. So what happens here is, say for example, you're using a particular service for a minute or a two. GCP will charge you only for those minutes and nothing else. If you compare it with AWS, AWS charges you on the hourly basis. What happens is, say for example, you are using a service for 20 minutes, AWS will charge you for one complete hour. GCP is different here. It will charge you on second basis. So if you are using a service for a minute or a two, normally you'd be using a service more than that, but consider you are using it for just a minute or two. In that case, you'll be charged only for that minute and nothing else. So yes, it is literally pay as you go in real sense. No termination fees. Since you're paying second wise, there's no concern about termination fees. There are no upfront costs and there are no costs charged to you after you end the services or stop using the services too. So that means you are paying only for what you're using and this is the best way. So you do not have to worry about anything. Today you feel like stopping or ending your account with GCP, you can do that and GCP will stop billing you the very second you stop its services or using its services rather. So these are the different models which GCP considers. But there are quite a few other innovations which GCP has brought into its pricing models. So let us move further and take a look at those as well. Now we have something called as sustained use discounts. What happens here? Well, what GCP does is it has something called as Google Cloud Compute Engine. Now it automatically lowers the price of your virtual machines when you use them to run its sustained workloads. That means more the instances you use and for the longer duration, the lesser amount you're paying. 
and what this does is gcp actually provides you with a discount of somewhere around 25 percent when you use these vms or when you go for the sustained use discounts so yes again you're saving a lot of money here let me give you a heads up in this video we'll be talking about a lot of pricing and that would lead me to use these terms like you would be saving a lot of money and this is the amount of percentages which you're saving so bear with me and i hope you would understand why i would be using these terminologies again and again next on this list we have per second billing yes i've discussed this point quite a few times rather so i won't be discussing this any further let's move to the next point directly that is preemptible vm instances now what happens is there are quite a few services which people need to implement in batch processes that means the lifespan can be smaller so if your system is highly fault tolerant and you can actually bear or use this smaller lifespan kind of instances this feature is for you because it will help you save a lot of money and that lot of money would be somewhere around 80 percent of your total investments so yes preemptible vm instances a lot of saving cold line have you ever worried about the archives or the storage that has to deal with archives if yes you know that you deal with problems like slow transfer rates and slowness in the total process now this is where cold line is very different it provides you services at the cost of the slow services that are there in the market that means it is very cheap but the services which it provides are very fast and very nice and those are called as cold line storage services and if you use these you would actually love it and would be very nice for you to do all the operations at a very faster pace next we have something called as custom machine types now what gcp does is it involves or includes a lot of machine learning in most of its usage or services what that does is that lets you have real time analysis on lot of things and when you talk about customization since you are using gcp services what it does is it calculates the amount of services which you use and accordingly what it does is it suggests you the most customized machine types which you can use and thus you end up saving a lot of money again right sizing recommendations now it is similar to what i just discussed right sizing is choosing the right amount of services it is not always about choosing services that are huge in size rather what you do is you go ahead and choose those services that are smaller in size that meet your needs and solve all your business problems and that too at an affordable price this is what right sizing is and this is where gcp again helps you it has so many ml algorithms and those algorithms what they let you do is they kind of help you cut down on a lot of unnecessary sizing issues and thus you end up saving a lot of money here too committed use discounts yes we talked about something called as sustained use discounts it is similar what you can do is if you use it instances for longer durations when you talk about gcp you are actually going to pay a lot lesser why is that gcp gives you 25 percent discount on sustained usage of its vms or its instances so again if you have committed use you are going to get a lot of discounts again so these are various pricing innovations which gcp has brought in the market now that we've understood these let us move further and understand the next point of discussion next what we have is gcp pricing features firstly we talk about cloud pricing leaders now gcp leads the pack when you talk about pricing i think i've mentioned this already but let me reiterate it now aws is leading in terms of various cloud service providers in the market and if you compare its pricing with gcp gcp is still 60 percent more affordable than what aws is so when you talk about pricing leadership yes it goes to gcp again purpose-built servers chips and switches yes we all know that google is a huge organization and when you talk about various features like built-in servers data centers chips switches well it has very advanced technology and that is why it has great data centers which are technologically very advanced and this actually helps you save on a lot of money how because they innovate so many things and based on those innovations your costs are continuously cut down in n number of ways as we move further we would be discussing those as well milliseconds matter now yes going back to previous point milliseconds do matter and what gcp does is it helps you cut down on various costs how say for example you're concerned with booting up your system now when you talk about booting up gcp lets you boot up your systems in or instance rather in just 35 seconds now that is a very less amount of time and since you can boot up so fast you're saving a lot of time again a lot of energy too and hence you save money 
So when you talk about milliseconds to GCP will actually take care of that as well data center efficiency through deep mind ML now machine learning is something that actually inspires me a lot and I have been working in machine learning for some time now and what I figured out is using machine learning you can do so many cool things and GCP also uses machine learning very well what it does is it actually lets you engage or gauge various power sources now when you talk about cloud services your main concern is the heating up issues and the electricity which you are using what GCP does is it uses deep mind to calculate the amount of electricity that is consumed and it helps you optimize that electricity to by 40 percent hence you end up saying somewhere around 50 percent of the total cost which you would otherwise invest in the electricity or all those things not you basically GCP and since GCP invests less money in all these things it actually lowers its prices for various services that you use and that is why GCP is so affordable. So this was about different GCP pricing features. Let us move further and try to understand the next point then. Now GCP provides you with a calculator. All this while we have been discussing how GCP pricing is good, how it helps you lower your costs and all those things. But what about calculating the money which you're going to spend? Because even though you're spending less, you still need to keep a track of the services which you're using as in, okay, what are the services I'm using and how much money am I paying for it? If you're worried about that, don't worry about it because GCP has something called as a GCP calculator and what it does is it lets you calculate all the money which you might invest in your services and thus you can keep a track of all the investments that you're supposed to do in your near future as well. Now once I get into the demo part, I would be discussing the calculator in little more depth. So before we do that, let's cover one more topic and then we can switch to the demo part. So what do you exactly get in the free trial? Now I talked that GCP provides you with something called as a free trial or a free tier rather. Now in that free tier, what GCP does is it gives you access to all of its services for free for 12 months. And there are certain services which you are charged for, but that is after a certain limit. Say for example, you have a particular service and say for example, you have a storage service. You can store somewhere around 10 GB of data. What you can do is you can actually go ahead and store 10 GB of data on monthly basis and if you exceed that limit that is when GCP will charge you. So what GCP does is it also gives you something called as $300 balance. Now this balance is something you can use when you exceed these free limits during your trial period. So when you talk about a free trial, yes, you have a lot of services to use that are free of cost, but there are certain limits on it. And once you cross those limits, you still have this $300 balance in your account which you can go ahead and use to pay for these services as well So you get sufficient access to all the services which GCP has to offer to you now What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and switch into the demo part so that we can Understand as in how the calculator works and what is the free trial and what all services are given to you in this free trial So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go ahead and give you a demo of how the free trial and the calculator works so meanwhile I do that just bear with me because I need to quickly switch into my GCP website So yeah, what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and I've opened the website of Google Cloud Platform as you can see on my screen We have something called as GCP free tier in order to access this free tier You have to go ahead and create an account on GCP website to do that You'll have to perform certain formalities or undergo certain formalities that is firstly you'll have to give in your credit card details do not worry GCP won't charge you anything for this but yes there is a verification process and for that verification process GCP does deduct one dollar from your account and that one dollar is actually refunded back into your account and this process happens very quickly so you won't have to worry about anything after this let me assure you that no money is deducted or refunded from your account unless it is asked to you now once you've created an account you'll be having an access to various services which GCP has to offer to you and once those or that span expires after that GCP will ask you would you want to upgrade to our services and if you say yes only after that your billing cycle would start so when you give in your credit card details stay assured that you won't be charged anything so let's move further and try to understand this free tier a little more firstly you have an access for 12 months in that certain services are available to you for free and those are free always there are certain services which have certain limits if you cross those limits you will be charged but those limits are very high and I don't think there should be any problem of you exceeding those limits So as far as trial basis is concerned, you're covered completely 
if you are supposed to use some APIs and all those things for which you have to pay do not worry about that as well GCP gives you a credit balance of $300 and you can pay for those services using this balance. So all in all when I say a free tier this is a free tier again in a complete true sense. So let us move further and take a look at few of its products that GCP has to offer. Now there are certain services here. We have something called as Google App Engine using which you can create your apps. You have your data store where you can actually do various reads, writes and deletes per day. And you have something called as your Google Compute Engine which lets you perform various compute services. And there are certain limits that are given to you and these limits are more than enough as in the amount of transactions and operations which you can perform is huge. So I would suggest that you to go through this website and understand these things in detail. Next we have some other services that is how the storage works and what are its nitty gritties that you need to consider. Then you have something called as your Google PubSub. I won't be getting into the details of these topics one by one but yeah, there are quite a few services which you can actually access. Then we have something called as Kubernetes. Now Kubernetes is nothing but a containerization technique. Yes, we do have a session on this thing. So I would request you to go through that video as well. That video is there on YouTube and you can actually refer that video if you want to which talks about Kubernetes in detail. Now GCP lets you integrate with Kubernetes as well or lets you take this approach as well. Now, there are other things say for example, you have something called as a stack driver. You have your big query now big query is very huge and very nice when you talk about big data analysis. And yes, uh, your GCP lets you use this as well. You have your cloud speech and you have other services here. I would request you to go through these services one by one and try to understand them a little more. They're pretty simple and fairly easy to understand. And depending upon your usage or your business needs, you can actually go ahead and consider using these services also. So this was about the free tier as in what it is and what all it has to offer. There are quite a few sessions available here which would talk about how to get started and all those things. You may refer those as well for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into the calculator part. So yes, this is how the calculator basically looks like uh, it lets you compute or calculate all your expenses which you might pay in your future. Say for example, firstly, this is the by default selection which says the compute engine. Now if you've used the cloud services, you'd realize that what compute services and compute engines do basically you'll be dealing in lot of instances and you'll be charged accordingly. So you can actually go ahead and calculate the prices of your instances or your uses basically say for example I'm using three instances here and I say give me an estimate as in what is the total price which I'm supposed to pay here. I can get in or enter in all the details that are there as in what is the OS I'm using whether it's CentOS which is the standard OS which normally people use we have our Ubuntu here and other service providers as well. You can select the type of instance and all those things and you can just go ahead and say add my estimate. And it would give you details as in this is the amount which you'd be paying. You'd be paying somewhere around three dollars three point eight eight dollars a month. You can even go ahead and save these estimates just for reference sake as in say for example during a particular month you've used so many instances and in your future you want to keep a track of it. You have an option of saving these details or you can even go ahead and mail these details to yourself. So this was about just the compute part. You can calculate all the other costs as well as in how much the app engine would cost you your Kubernetes, your cloud storage and all those things. So it gives you cost of almost everything and you can keep track of whatever that is there. Apart from that once you start using these services based on different projects you can again estimate as in how much money have you invested? How much are you paying? How can you resize those right size those? How can you optimize your cost in various aspects and everything? That is why you have this calculator and it will take care of almost all the problems that you're supposed to deal with. So this was about the basic introduction as far as your calculator is concerned and your free tier is concerned. I hope you all had something new to learn in this so called small demo. As far as this session goes I would be ending this session here and here. I hope you had something new to learn out of this session and I hope to see you all again. Thank you. Bye bye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!